What is up, guys? Welcome back to another awesome episode of American Truck Simulator. My name is Evil One, and this episode, we find ourselves kind of on the border here in Jackpot, Nevada. I think the last episode, we were actually down here in Carson City. I took a load down here to Bakersfield, almost to Bakersfield, dropped it off right about there or so. And I took another load out of here and went this way, trying to make my way back up north, trying to get myself back up to the Spokane Coeur d'Alene area, otherwise known as home. Let us, before we get too far gone into the weeds here, let us take a look at our mods really quick. So I did watch some videos and got some great ideas for some mods. And I actually think I have them in the correct order now. Correct me if I'm wrong, as always. So I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Please bear with me. We've got the quick gates for ATS. This just opens and closes those gates a little bit faster. No dead ends, so we won't find those blocked off streets where we can't. We have to back out or something like that. The extended traffic light timing, this is so we don't run a red light. Uh, it makes it a little bit more realistic. We have to sit there a little bit longer, but uh, it's it's fine. I don't mind it. This is the realistic fines with no headlight out fine. Uh, I was getting a lot of fines and stuff for, for getting my headlights being on. So this mod takes care of that. And then, of course, we got the more realistic finds. The GDC Logistics Economy mod. Uh, that makes everything really uh, cheap. We'll talk about that one here in just a few minutes. We got the realistic rain, the realistic brutal graphics and weather, uh, realistic physics, uh, the Pro Mods Complete North American Background Map, the real, time, the real traffic density. We have the skin pack. We have the real companies, gas stations, and billboards, the icons mod, and then we have this Kenworth K100E cab over truck, which we will talk about here in a little bit. So that's the mods that I'm playing with currently. So there we go. So the other thing I wanted to bring up really quick was actually in the options menu. We're going to go down here to the controls, and that is because I did run a convoy with Ovon the Wise just as a testing while I was waiting for him to download the mods. I was fiddling around with this steering sensitivity, and I got it cranked all the way up. And what that does for me is actually moves the steering wheel faster with the joystick. So, and now it's it's almost good. Like, I wish I can go a little bit faster, but it's fine. I'm not actually complaining about that now. And it's been great, really, really great. So the other thing is I do have some uh, new controls laid out for my, my keyboard with some other uh, gameplay things. As a matter of fact, let me check one thing. Yeah, the traffic offense, okay, I, I did leave that off perfect i have some automatic things now like um i have like the automatic retarder just have that kick on no matter what the automatic engine and electricity start sure uh air brake simulation realistic fuel consumption there was a couple more down here um but yeah just just kind of quality of life things nothing major okay let's hop in the truck and we will talk about where we're at and what we're doing all right we find ourselves here in jackpot uh, nevada a little small town we are currently sitting at a motel parking lot we just got a night's sleep in fact we can't sleep anymore it won't let me and the time is it's friday at 2 22 a.m i was trying to time my sleep to make it where i'm awake right at the morning so it's not so stinking dark out here but I cannot sleep anymore. If I try to sleep, it won't, it doesn't even pop up. I used to have a little message right there saying that I cannot sleep anymore. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that fuel station right there and get some fuel because we are running kind of low. We got a little bit over half tank. I did fill up in California. Well, I put a little bit of fuel in California when I was down there and it was extremely expensive. So I didn't fill the tank. We're going to go ahead and fire up here. Take our parking brake off. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Push in our, our air. I do also have voice navigation enabled. Ovon convinced me to do that, and I've been kind of hesitant. The last run I did, I left it on when I was playing by myself, and it did come in handy, though I kind of lost track of where I was. I didn't even know what state I was in. I uh, just listened to the traffic turn by turn uh, because it doesn't tell you where you're at. 
obviously. It just tells you when to turn left or right. That is a wrecked truck. Okay, we got a little bit to go here. We'll go stop at that, that fuel station there. Did also notice that the new way that I am recording this uh, VR experience, you are only seeing my right eye, my dominant eye. So everything I see out of my left eye, which there's some overlap, you're not seeing. So I have to be conscious, especially looking left, make sure I turn my head more to the left than is what I'm used to just so you guys can get a good view of the mirror and that sort of thing. Okay, here we go. Let's pull into this 76 station here. 4.56 a gallon. That's a lot better than the California prices. Let's pull our air. Shut off our engine. Let's start filling up. All right, there we have it. $756 for 165 uh, gallons. That hurts, but we're not going to pull away just yet. Let us try and find a job in this area. And we'll come into this screen here. Let's go to the job market. Let's do the freight market. We are in this little town of Jackpot. And we do actually have some loads here. Fantastic. Where are they going? Thompson Falls, Montana. That is the right direction. It's at the UPS place. It pays $13.81. That's actually a pretty good price, too, for this. But the load is, or the route is kind of windy. It's not horrible. I think we're going to take this one here. We got 13 hours and 40 minutes to get it. So might as well take that load. We'll go to set that as a GPS destination. Now our turn by turn will tell us exactly how to get there. So let's fire up. Let's go. Let's go. Push in our air. Pull away and get charged that $756. There we go. That money's now gone. I think we got to go. We're going to turn left here. I don't see anybody. Hopefully I didn't pull out in front of anybody. Get ready to turn Reroute. left. We're going to have me turn right here. Turn right. There we go. And we drove past the UPS store. In fact, that's where I offloaded the load when I brought it here was at that UPS place. And here's that UPS place right here on our left. I think the turn in is just right up here. I can honestly say I'd rather I'd rather have a map than the voice. I'm running that stop sign. But I don't mind the voice and I was just messing around trying with the different uh, voices no. and stuff and there was uh, this was the one I just kind of landed on I tried them all and I don't think this was my favorite but it's kind of just where I stopped and now it's kind of stuck I think it's like the British one all right I think that's our trailer right there trailers on the freight market here we go. It expected Saturday at 2.33 a.m. Or Saturday at 9.13 a.m. Let's see what we got here for options. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. You know, pulling doubles is harder to back up, but it's going to be a little bit easier maybe on the, some of those curves and something longer. But... This is going to be easier to back up if we get into a hairy spot where we have to park it. But we're going to go with this one here. Or we could pull triples. Or other options. Ooh. Yeah, lots of options here. Let's go with the one that they recommended first. That's this guy right here. So that's what it'll be. I still don't know what this GPS thing means. Let's take the job. The trailer is ready. All right. That's got to be it right there. Okay, here we there, go. There we go. All right. Let's hook up to this guy. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so it was asked uh, a little while ago if I could do a proper walk around as I know it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shut off the engine. Now, these lights, these marker lights... I can't actually turn them off right now. That's their, I had that light set to automatic, so I can't actually turn those off. 
the headlights come on and off with the uh, engine. And so I'm going to briefly kind of do our walk around now. And this is from what I remember a long time ago when I was, you know, a, a trucking for, for my job. And I'm going to bring up how I got my CDL maybe on the road. This is from what I remember mixed with what I did. And some things are going to be different. And please do not take this as advice. If you're, if you're planning on getting your CDL, I'm sure lots of things have changed. So, but this is what, it, what, what I remember and what I would do uh, whenever I got to a new truck or I pulled on a new trailer or something like that. So what I would do is I would pop the hood. I'd pull the hood forward. I'd inspect the uh, everything under the hood that I could find. Like I would look at the belts. I would look at the wiring. If you know if there's any wiring that was frayed or broken or whatever, any hoses le- leaking, that sort of thing. I'd check the engine oil. I'd ch- check the power steering fluid. I would check um, everything I possibly can. I would check the steering linkage, make sure that it's it's in good condition. I would check the suspension of the front driver uh, tire right here. I would look at the front driver tire, steer tire uh, for tread depth. I believe it was like uh, uh, three thirty seconds of an inch or something like that. It, it was uh, top of Lincoln's head, you know, with a penny. I would check the, the wheel itself, check the lug nuts and all that kind of thing. I would pop the cap um, every once in a while, not every time, but I would check the oil oil seal, make sure that the oil seal is not leaking. I come around the other side and check everything on this side, make sure that the turbo is, is there, make sure all the wires and hoses and everything, there's no leaking coolant. I'd check the coolant level, um, I, everything. Just check everything under the hood, make sure it's mechanically sound to drive. On the outside here on the front, I would check all the lights. And uh, I remember from when I was getting my CDL, uh, if there if there was a light, it had to work. So if all these trucks that are all decked out and all these different lights and stuff, every single one of those has to work. I'd check my bumper, make sure it's in good condition, all beat up or banged up. And I would check this tire, this front tire over here for the same thing as the other side. And I would start moving down the passenger side of the truck. I would check the air cleaner, make sure the air cleaners are clear. I would check the mirror, make sure it's properly adjusted and not broken, that sort of thing. Make sure that the exhaust is tight. Over here I'd, on the fuel tank, I'd make sure that the fuel tank cap is secure. There's no leaks, no nothing like that. I'd look underneath the truck, make sure that there's no leaks at the crossover tube and stuff like that. Moving back, I would check the drivers, make sure that the drivers are in good condition with plenty of tread. Again, check the wheels for lug nuts, make sure they're all there, make sure that the oil seals are not leaking and, and they're in good condition. I would check the drive shaft, make sure that the drive shaft is uh, good, you know, it's not like all wall- wallered out. Same with the carrier bearings, that sort of thing. Make sure that the drive train itself is in good, good condition. I'd also take a brief look at the chassis itself, the frame, make sure that there are all the bolts that are supposed to be there are there. Make sure that there's like no cracked welds. If there is a weld, that's a problem. You're not supposed to be welding on those uh, unless it's from like the factory, that sort of thing. Um, check mud flaps, make sure mud flaps are there. Uh, again, check all the lights. I would then inspect the fifth wheel, make sure that the fifth wheel is in good condition, make sure that the jaws are locked and that goes around to the other side too. Make sure that the kingpin is there and straight. Make sure that the apron that the kingpin hooks into is not all banged up, beat up. And make sure that there's plenty of lube on the fifth wheel. Moving back to this side of landing gear, make sure that it's straight. Make sure that uh, there's no obvious signs of damage. Make sure that all the lights work on the trailer itself. Make sure that all the uh, reflectors are there and visible. I would then move back to this rear axle and inspect the rear axle. Make sure that the brakes, the slack adjusters, oh, I do that on the drivers too. Make sure that all the slack adjusters and everything are in good working condition and nice and tight. Uh, Make sure that there is brake pad. Uh, You can kind of look inside uh, some of the wheels uh, and see the brake pads on the inside and make sure that there's actually pad material. So in this truck here, I would check that dolly, uh, make sure that it's just in good working condition. It's kind of the same thing with every axle, uh, that landing gear and that as well. On the back here, I would make sure that the lights work. Uh, and just check all around, make sure that these doors are closed and locked, make sure that the license plate is clear and legal, make sure that the reflector tape along the bottom is good, uh, make sure I have any placards, if I have any placards that they are there and locked in. On this side, I would just work my way forward, kind of the same thing really quick. I see here it's a um, reefer unit, so make sure that we have plenty of fuel into in the fuel tank there, make sure that it's secured. Uh, 
without any leaks. Uh, got a good fuel cap there and that sort of thing. Moving forward, make sure that the reefer unit is actually in working condition. I've never actually pulled a reefer uh, trailer before. So, but I'm guessing you want to make sure that that's actually on and working if you have perish perishables in there. Moving up here, I do the same thing for that fuel tank on this trailer. I would then check that uh, handle for the landing gear, make sure that it is uh, actually properly stowed and it look, kind of looks like it may not be. It's just kind of hanging down and it you usually they're kind of angled backwards a little bit. Maybe there's a little clamp or something holding it down. Moving around this side, make sure that the kingpin handle is actually secured inside the uh, fifth wheel again up here with the uh, airlines and the power lines uh, make sure that they're not touching the deck or getting hung up make sure that they're in good condition take the glad hands off and check those gaskets make sure that they're not going to leak i like to use a little bit of spit to lube those up to make it uh, go together a little bit easier and uh, this side here as well i would check that fuel tank on this side and make sure that the cap is there it's good and tight and then i would check the battery box uh, and oftentimes I'd pull the battery box and just check the connections on the battery, make sure that the connections on the battery are actually in good condition uh, and tight without any like heavy corrosion and stuff like that. I would also look at those air tanks. Those are those air tanks right underneath those batteries. Make sure that the drain valves are closed and not leaking. There's no obvious signs of rust, you know, that sort of thing. Make sure they're not banged up or beat up and good proper condition. It's all about that condition, right? So, and then I would check this mirror as well and air cleaner if I had one. I'd also look at the glass, make sure that the glass is all good. It's not all cracked out or beat up, banged up. You can kind of see that from the inside. So let's hop back in the cab at this point. So the in-cab portion, I'm not gonna do the brake uh, bleed down test. That's what I called it. It's kind of just making sure that your air brakes are actually good. It's where you uh, you pull your air, you chalk your wheels, uh, and you pump your brake. You hit that brake pedal several times until you uh, lose all your air. You basically, you're simulating an air leak, and your parking brake should pop, and your brake should lock up. So in the cab, um, just really quick, I just want to make sure that there's nothing around my feet. You know, there's a good, clean condition cab. It looks like this cab is nice and clean. I love this truck, by the way. Uh, make sure, again, that the mirrors, I just pointed at the mirror with my hand. That's so funny. <laughs> make sure that the mirrors are in good condition and adjust properly. I would also take a look at my gauge as well. But I've, I'd fire it up here. Let's get fired up here. There we go. Take a look at all my gauges, make sure all the gauges are in good working order and they're all actually working. We go ahead, parking brake is set, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that my... Oh, I thought my parking brake was set. There we go. Yeah, I know. Just watching the tack and all the gauges, make sure that they actually respond. Now... Over here, we can see that I don't want to use up any air, and that's why this was happening like this. <laughs> so I didn't want to use any air. That's why I didn't do the um, the bleed down test. But apparently, I was losing air while I was going forward and back. So push on the uh, on the brake pedal. It uses a little bit of air, but it doesn't use it as nearly as fast as in this game. So, but I would just check all the gauges, make sure everything's good, and now. We are hooked up to the trailer, so I'm going to push in my air. I'm going to pull the Johnson bar, the Johnny bar, down. And that applies air to, or excuse me, that applies the service brakes to the trailer itself. And so now I can pull forward and we don't move. So if we were to move, uh, that tells us that the kingpin is not locked. And I'd immediately hit the brakes and jump out, inspect it. I don't want that trailer to, to fall off the, off the truck. That would be bad. If it did come loose or something like that, we, we want to still be underneath it. And then we would just hit the, hit the brakes again and back up, get back underneath it, make sure that the dogs on the fifth wheel are actually engaged and locked in. So yeah. That's basically it. We are ready to go now. So where are we going? Let's pull up our map here and make it a little bit bigger. We're going to head north out of town. And I don't see any reason why we can't just get on the road right now. So let's go.
So once again, yeah, that walkthrough, please don't think that that's any part of your CDL testing. Like I could be way wrong now. That's kind of what I I remember again from my getting my CDL. Turn left. Turn left. And what I would actually do. Now, these brakes are still really touchy. I have those turned all the way down. Now would I do a, a big walk around like that every time I came out came out to the truck? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, we're turning left here. Get ready to turn right. We'll get on the road here and I'll talk more about it. So yeah, that walk around, you know, that what I would do in real life would basically be the same thing as that but I would do it really quick and there's a lot of it that you can kind of do simultaneously you don't have to explain what you're doing to yourself you just got to kind of know it right and there's certain things that are not ever going to change but there it's a good practice to get into and if I was coming out to my truck that I drove yesterday I'm probably not going to take too close a look at the frame for any you know, illegal welds or something like that, right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, and again, that's unique. Welcome to Idaho. We are now in Idaho. So, uh, okay. I just saw those tracks going off the road. 55 miles an hour here. So we're doing 60. We're going to set the cruise control there. Way station one mile. We got the green light. Haven't not had the green light in a long time. We're gonna keep her wound up to about 60 in the 55. I'm not too worried about getting a speeding ticket, especially here in Idaho. As someone who is from Idaho, I can tell you that the law enforcement is somewhat laxed when it comes to the same with like Montana. You know, it's that they will pull you over for sure if you're if you're really speeding and hauling ass. You know, especially through a town or something like that. But for the most part, they'll leave you alone. So yeah, back to the walk around. You know, you you want to you want to know your truck. You know, and and you you can do your your mirrors and your your lights just by looking. I mean, you can just just walk around. Literally, just walk. You don't need to stop or anything. Go Crawl. Straight on crawl under the truck and you know and look for leaks and that sort of thing and check your fifth wheel that's a big one is that damn fifth wheel Keep left. I didn't see a speed limit slow down sign so I'm gonna keep her wound up to about 60 the last one I saw was 60 I didn't increase our speed there's one that right there for 60 so I think we're good I also did find the button for the Let's see. Whoa. That's a sharp curve. Ooh, howdy. There it is. That's high beams. Oh, we got to slow down to 40, 45 here. Oh, we got a red light. Whoa. I was not expecting that. That's not realistic, right? So yeah, I found the, I remapped the button for the headlights and they, the oncoming traffic will flash you, which I think is awesome. <laughs> uh, if you leave your high, head, uh, high beams on, which is super awesome. This is one of the problems with uh, that extended uh, signal. Hello. Day cap Peterbilt. There is no way you're out pulling me. Either I'm really heavy, which again, I have no idea even what this weighs. But I guarantee my truck is far better than your truck. It's so either you're really light or I'm really heavy. We 
go through Twin Falls here. Oh, we've got 35 mile an hour zone. Go straight on. We'll go straight on. Freightliner? Yeah, it looks like a Freightliner. Pulling some Tyson cooking oil or something? Like, <laughs> yeah, turn left. Oh, we got to turn left. Turn left and then keep left. Never seen Tyson tanker before. Keep left and then turn Oops. left. I kind of messed that up a little bit. I can't turn left yet. I gotta wait for the light. Go straight on. I'm gonna go straight on. Got a dump truck in front of us. Are we getting on I-84? That'd be great. Be on the freeway. Golly, I cannot see that truck in front of us. I don't know if it's fog or he just doesn't have Keep lights right on. And then turn right. Oh, we'll turn on light. Right. Yeah, now I can see him. Turn right. Right, get on the freeway. That's enough of you. Jump behind the Snyder grain truck. That's funny. <laughs> Alright, we're getting over. I'm getting around these guys here. So, why do I have a Kenworth uh, tab over in my mods folder? And I'm going to tell you it's because I want a Peterbilt. <laughs> so, because that makes sense, right? So, I really want a mod, a Peterbilt uh, 352, I believe, uh, cab over. Now, honestly, I don't know much about the truck, except we had one on the farm. And it was actually the very first truck I ever drove, semi truck. And it was a tractor trailer setup. And we actually used it on the farm as our potato truck. It was, um, it would pull alongside the potato digger. And when I was about eight years old, nine years old, I started, oh, I got my high beam stolen. I started uh, driving the tractor, pulling the potato digger. And my stepdad, he would pull during potato harvest, he would pull that cab over with the potato trailer alongside me and the digger would empty right into his trailer. And he would take it to the, to the storage and unload it. And we would sit there and wait. Uh, it was, Usually me and uh, a couple other workers on the on the actual digger, and we'd wait for him to come back, and then we would continue going. And one day, I think I was probably I want to say maybe eleven or twelve. I wanted to be in that cab. Now I've ridden in that truck a lot, but I've never driven it. So I wanted to drive that, that semi truck. So one day, I mean, it was evening, uh, I told my stepdad that I would like to start learning how to drive that truck. And so he was like, perfect, let's, let's go do it. And so in the yard there at the, at the farm, he gave me some, some lessons. And I could barely reach the pedals and see over the dash. The air right seat was pretty much bottomed out and I still had a, a hard time with it. So that was the truck I learned how to drive. And the next year, 
Uh, my stepdad was in the in the tractor pulling the potato digger, and I was in the truck. And that's how we did our potato harvest, and it was awesome. Every once in a while, though, we would get another truck, like a actual truck with a potato bin on the on the chassis of the truck itself. But that was our our Peterbilt that we had for a long time, and I can't tell you anything other than what it looked like. And I know it was a Peterbilt, uh, and it was red and white, and it was just a standard uh, wheelbase, I guess, truck. It wasn't anything special or anything like that. And the, it just worked around the farm. Like, we had a flatbed that we would use sparingly because we didn't really have much to haul. We'd haul hay with it every once in a while, um, but not not that often and my stepdad he had a, a day job and my grandpa worked the farm so so but during harvest you know it seemed like too for potato harvest uh it was just my my stepdad and uh me and a couple of workers like we would get temporary help uh to to ride on the dirty uh, potato digger and we would just do bust out potato harvest. I think it's probably because my grandpa was doing other things at that same time. Um, but anyway, so that was my childhood truck. Now, ooh, which way are we going? We probably want to go to Idaho. Yeah, Idaho Falls. I'm getting over, buddy. I wish it was more daylight here. I can see the road a little better. It's foggy. I think that's one reason I'm having a hard time seeing. There's a, like a potato truck right here. Speak of the devil. Got the belt there on the back, the door. It looks like kind of like a grain wagon, but it's actually got a belt to offload it. So anyway, when I turned 18, I was actually signed up to join the military. Um, but I wanted to get my CDL before leaving and I, the reason I wanted it is because at the time you're not going to yield to me are you good grief you're supposed to yield to me that's getting lighter woohoo at the time I had access to a semi truck and you didn't have to go through any kind of truck driving school they had them especially for like company drivers uh, like JB Hunt had a school I'm sure uh, Swift I know that easily did because my stepdad had to go through that even though he already had a CDL so if you wanted to be a company driver you had to go through a school and oftentimes they would help you get your CDL and they would just like take the school out of your wages for however long I didn't want to be a, a company driver. I was joining the Marine Corps. So, but I wanted to get my CDL while I had access to a truck. Easy access to a truck. Because at that time, all you needed was a book and a truck. Probably a good idea to have your mentor as well, or a mentor to kind of teach you how to, how to, how to drive, right? So I got a book and I leaned on my stepdad quite heavily and my mom of all of all people she was a school bus driver had her class B CDL but more importantly she was an instructor for the school district and she was responsible for what was that I didn't hear what she said Anyway, uh, she was responsible for training all like the new hires and stuff to make sure that they knew uh, the routes and the buses and, and if they didn't have their CDLs, 
to help them obtain their CDLs, uh, Class B. So that though that didn't really, there's a lot that carries over like air brakes and stuff like that between Class A and Class B, and I wanted a Class A. So I leaned on my stepdad, studied the book, scheduled the test, and I went in, and this was back when it was a paper test. You had to actually, there was no computers. You had to actually fill out uh, the, the test booklet. Um, I passed, and once you pass, uh, you schedule the, the driving portion. And the driving portion was a comprehensive walk around. Uh, the air brake test, some maneuvers in the in like the parking lot. There we go. We got the green light. Great. Can you move that out of my face now? I pulled in with that Peterbilt with our flatbed trailer because you have to have a trailer as well. And I've already passed the written. And I asked the examiner, which you can be like human, right? You can. You can ask them, well, we can bump up the speed here. I didn't realize that. Um, you can ask them questions. Like, they're, they're not so rigid where it's like, oh, you don't want to talk to them and, and stuff like that. I was joking and laughing with mine because I'm a, I'm a kid. And he was curious as to why I was getting my CDL, you know, who I was going to be driving for and, and that sort of thing. And I told him I just wanted it to have it. You know, I have the truck. I can, I can get it. I love trucks, and I uh, just want to make sure everything was legal. Oh, I had to get my permit too. That's right. I had to to get my like my learner's permit so I can drive the truck to the exam and practice and, and stuff like that. Even though small farming communities, uh, it wasn't a big deal. You just want to stay off the the big roads. Like the highways and that sort of thing with your with your tractor trailer. So, and we're hit, entering Montana, right on. I got the throttle peg. By the way, we're climbing some pretty steep grade here. We must be heavy because that guy is going around us with that IKEA furniture. So I, I uh, show up for the driving test with the with that Peterbilt, and that cab over, awesome truck. It was a clapped out farm truck. Don't, don't let me kid you. But we kept really good care of it as far as maintenance wise go. Like all the lights worked. You know the brakes were always in good condition. Uh, it was clean. You know it was dirty inside because it's a farm truck. But it was it wasn't like muddy and you know caked on crap you know and stuff like that we, we kept the the glass clean and the wiped down the dog house it had a little sleeper a little single bed uh, sleeper but uh whoa about to cause another accident now ikea truck just slammed on the brakes holy cow i locked them all up that's insane. Nobody's station either is closed or something. I don't remember getting a, a light for this one. I think it's the like the port of entry or something too. Right? So anyway, I asked what I'm getting at here. Holy cow. <laughs> I asked my examiner uh, first thing, for right away, I, right after I introduced myself, and he kind of gave me the rundown. He asked me if I had any questions. I'm like, I do. And my first question was, are you going to make me verbalize everything that I'm thinking? Or are you going to like see that I am looking at the glass and that there's no cracks or or uh, chips in it, you know, that sort of thing. And he was, there's a helicopter. Uh, he was like, for the most part, during the walk around, I need you to verbalize what you're doing. He's like, you probably don't have to inspect everything. Just kind of tell me what you're looking for. And he's like, for the uh, driving portion, he's like, maybe just kind of hint at what you're doing or what you're thinking, you know, like when you're checking your mirrors. He's like, I don't need you to say, I'm checking my left mirror. I'm checking my left mirror. 
you know, stuff like that. He's like, I can see your head turning and, and doing that. He's like, but good question, you know. And he's really impressed that I asked a question like that. And I wasn't intimidated. I was nervous, but I wasn't intimidated. And because I studied, I really knew knew my stuff. So, and he tried quizzing me on things during it, you know. And uh, it wasn't so much of memorizing things it was more testing me to see if I actually knew what what we're doing here wow that is okay that looks so bizarre with this fog so we did the walk around and pass with flying colors and uh, we did the brake bleed down test plus pass with flying colors and I know that that was I was actually really nervous about that one because you have to do that one perfectly. And uh, there's like no gimme backs. There was a couple of like, you know, during the walk around, if you miss something, it's not the end of the world. That break, the air break portion of it, you want to know your stuff. At least you did. I don't know if it's changed or what. And this, of course, is in a manual as well. Uh, there was no automatic trucks back then. There was probably, I take it back, I, there was automatic trucks, but they were pretty rare. So, we do the driving portion, and we actually drove all the way out to the freeway. We got on the freeway and drove a little bit down the freeway, and uh, everything went great. And I was awarded my CDL, and about two months later, I was standing in the yellow footprints in San Diego, uh, MCRD boot camp. So, I had to do, oh, come on, speed up now. You had to do your, your physical, you gotta do a DOT physical. And I still get my DOT physical, pass with flying colors. It's, it's really simple uh, if you're intimidated by that as well. And I can speak to this too because I still get my DOT physical. Uh, basically, they just want to make sure that you're not diabetic, that you don't have leprosy or something like that. <laughs> you know, they do a, uh, just a very basic physical. Uh, make sure that you got good vision uh, or correctable vision, you know, that sort of thing. Make sure you're not uh, doing a bunch of drugs and and that sort of thing. It's, it's really simple, like, not a big deal. So, what does that have to do with the Kenworth cab over? Like I said, I want a Peterbilt 352 if I can get my hands on one, or 253 or something, it was something like that. Uh, but I can't find one. And during my searching, I found a Kenworth, that T100, and I was thinking, well, like, well, shoot, that's, it's actually really stinking close. The in interior is way different, but the exterior is really close. And so I really kind of like that truck. Whoa. Yeah, I remapped my uh, horn to the same button. So I have my city horn and my air horn on one button now. So you hear them both at the same time. <laughs> I forgot about that. So that's why I have that mod. If you know of a Peterbilt, I don't really care what the model is, honestly. I just would really like a Peterbilt cab over. If you know of a mod that is Peterbilt, I would love to have that mod. And that will be my next truck, uh, just for the nostalgia purposes. I miss trucking so much, um, and this game has kind of brought back some of that feeling, I guess. Even though this is just a game, you know, it's still that, just that nostalgia, I guess, of being over the road, being by myself, you know, talking on the CB, doing the walk-arounds, dealing with uh, cars, traffic. <laughs> so, so yeah. One of the things I, I was thinking about this the other day, like, what is it that I really miss? And keep in mind, I just had a semi truck not that long ago, 
truck, truck. It wasn't a semi, it was just a truck. And that Kenworth T300, uh, single axle, 36,000 gross. What was that? I think we're heading towards Missoula. We got a little curly cue on ramp here. Holy cow. You really don't need to slow down that much. I wish the AI was a little bit smarter. Now I'm complaining again. I-90 West, right on. So one of the things I really miss about driving truck, even my, my truck I just recently sold, is the smell. I know that sounds so weird. And I can't describe it to you like I, I don't know that smell but if you don't know what I'm talking about next time you're at a truck stop just go walk through some of the trucks and you'll smell it it's a truck smell it's not diesel fuel it's not like the rubber or you know the death fluid or some crap like that I have a tractor now and it runs on diesel and it's got big old rubber tires and it doesn't smell anything like a truck. But a truck smells like a truck. And I, I can't place that smell. I don't know what it is. But that smell is just so nostalgic for me. And it's not the interior either. It's not the interior of the cabs. Like the, the cabs themselves are, are kind of gross. To be honest with you. Especially the older ones. Where you get some of these uh, OTR guys that are... You know, living in their in their cabs, and there's like a two week old half rotten McDonald's bag, you know, in the corner of the sleeper or something. You know, that's that's not what I'm talking about. And, and it's more on the outside of the truck. It's just that that smell. And I, I like I said, I can't really place it. I know where we are. <laughs> I know exactly where we are. So somebody was talking to, uh, I don't know if it was in the comments or if it was on Discord. Go, go ahead and check out Discord, by the way. I did just create a new channel dedicated to this, this game. So if you'd like to share your screenshots or mods or tips and tricks that sort of thing um, head on over to discord invite link is in the description I would definitely welcome you anyway I was chatting with somebody and they were they told me that I got the wrong truck I purchased the wrong truck for the loads that I haul now this is a heavy haul truck and it's that's what it's best suited for and I understand that I get that a hundred percent this is a big truck Keep, I'm pretty sure that she said keep left. Keep right, and then exit right. All right, we are exiting right up here. Exit right. St. Regis. But it's capable of hauling anything, and that's why I got this truck. Is because I want I don't want to be restricted. Turn right. Whoa. That's a really good uh, 
rest area if you ever go into this area. Um, that little store right there is really awesome. Every year we do a family reunion at a campground right up this road on the Clark Fork River and we go floating down the Clark Fork River and inner tubes and tons of beer and we have uh, fires and eat s'mores and you know, it's great fun meet people we haven't seen in a year extended family from all around the area it's awesome go straight on we're going straight on now the speed limit that's incorrect like the speed limit in montana is um a, a, a high it's very high i think they actually have one for trucks that's lower um but I want to say it's like 80 for cars, 85 or something like that. It might be even higher than that uh, on this road. Yeah, here is the Clark Fork River. Super cool. see that car yeah so we would camp would be before that intersection that road between st. Regis and that intersection is really long actually in real life Thompson Falls is covered and the next town of I would next town or two up I think we drive through like a little community um, on this road before we get to the actual town and I don't remember the name of the town to be honest with you I don't think it's Thompson Falls and they have this like little general store there and I we bought them out of beer once like they had a one of those walk-in coolers it wasn't a big one but it was it was a well, building some track down there that's super cool but we Keep left and then turn left we bought them out of beer. Like they didn't have any more beer left, but it was a busy weekend. They didn't have much to have anyway, but we, I, I've never actually bought like a, a gas station out of beer before. Turn left. All right, here we are. There is our parking spot. It's all over now. All right, I need you out of my face. Let's try back up a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, let's pull our air. Perfect. We'll hop out of the cab here. So to disconnect a, a tractor trailer like this, um, for those of you who may not know, I mean, it's this isn't rocket science, right? Uh, you pull your air in your in your cab, and you come around to the other side. Pretend we're on the other side of the truck, and we would disconnect our air and our electrical. Uh, from the trailer and stow them, make sure that they're they're away. We then drop our landing gear down. Now you don't actually have to jack the trailer up uh, at all. Like you just put some pressure on the pads, and that's really about it. I hear a train. Oh, there's a train. Somebody did mention too, and I can't find that comment uh, that I need to have more realistic trains because the trains are all really short. And while I agree that these trains are really short uh, in this game I don't want to be sitting at a crossing for uh, you know 20 minutes in game time waiting for a train to go by uh, when I need to be on the road all right so anyway so yeah you put a little bit of pressure on the, the landing gears got actually got two speeds and it depends on the landing gear uh, you either push or pull in the, the handle and to make it go really fast or really slow. And the slower that you have more torque, you put a little bit more pressure on it. Then you walk around the other side of the, your uh, fifth wheel there and you pull your your kingpin, uh, locking jaws. Just pull out the handle, lock, you know, it kind of snaps back. And then you jump in your cab and you slowly pull away. And so that's kind of what we're gonna do now. We're just gonna push this button 
Landing gear goes down. Electrical gets done. All right, there we go. Boom. Excellent. We made 1381. Perfect. Got any job offers here? They do not. Okay. Well, we are going to jump back on the freeway, uh, I-90, and go to Coeur d'Alene. Um, I'm super tired, apparently, so I'm going to actually find a place to sleep. And when I come back, we're going to be in Coeur d'Alene with just our tractor, and uh, we'll go from there. And here we are just getting off the freeway in Coeur d'Alene. We are still bobtailing. We don't have a trailer. Uh, and I am looking for our garage, our shop. Uh, turn in here. Go off road a little bit. I got a construction area that I think that's our garage right there. Whoa, hello. So we'll pull down in there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. But I think we also probably should do some maintenance on this truck as well. It's not telling me that I need maintenance, but um, we'll see. Like, it's been a while since it's been to the shop for maintenance. I think we just pull forward this way, can't we? Yeah. We'll stop just like that. Perfect. We'll pull our air and we'll shut off the truck. So what I would like to do is actually talk about the amount of money that we're making. We're using that GDC the economy mod. And while that mod is great, it's a lot more realistic, and I'm going to keep using it. Uh, it would take us years to be able to afford a new building like this one here that we're in, uh, a new truck or a trailer or anything like that. So we can't actually purchase this because it's $30,000 and we only have $16,000. And that was a hard fought $16,000, let me tell you. Uh, it took several weeks, several trips to, to even get that way. And that's the halfway point for one of the cheapest trailers that we have. So, oh, we have more. Oh, check that out. So what I think we're gonna do, and I, I talked about this in the last game, um, our last episode, I think we need to take out a loan. Let's head over to the bank. I hate doing this, but we can get like a, a $500,000 loan for $307 a day. We're making that easy $307 a day. And if it means that we get, uh, our, our own trailer right away, and that might be better. And for $500,000, we don't need that much, right? We can get a lesser amount. But let's take a look at trucks. So I looked around a little bit more. I didn't see anything else I really liked. I came back to this truck. Um, I'm really thinking about purchasing this truck. And as, as I configured it a little bit ago, and uh, going with it, I really like the interior. So I think we're going to pull out the money and, we'll, and buy this truck. We'll buy a trailer, maybe two trailers, and we'll go from there. So, all right, for $307 a day, I think we can pull out the max. Ugh, I really don't want to do that. We don't have any skill points. I don't have any emails. Let's, uh, let's just do it. You're asking for a loan of $500,000. Repayment period is a long time. Interest rate is 19%. Holy cow. Oh. Nineteen percent. Yep. Let's do it. All right. We have a loan now for five hundred thousand dollars. Let's go build that truck and buy that truck. Okay, here we go. I don't feel good about this. Be honest with you. You know, I wanted a, I wanted a new truck, but I don't think this is the right truck. And I just configured it all up. So. The reason why, so the, the reason I'm kind of hesitant 
And we already have a heavy haul big truck, right? We can get something a little bit more fuel economy uh, wise and go a little bit um, smaller, a little bit less horsepower, you know, that sort of thing, and and pull, uh, you know, a, a box van, for example, just fine over the road. It doesn't have to be heavy haul like this. But I'm ready to hit that confirm button. But we already have a truck, very, very capable truck, just like this. It's got a lot of miles on it. This one's brand new. But it still works. It's still, it's still running. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the comments below what should we do here. Should we buy this truck? Should we download another mod? What mod? What would you like to see me drive? And if somebody comes up with one of those Peterbilt cab overs like I was talking about, I'll buy that one for sure. So for now, though, I think I'm just going to leave this we'll say yes to that and we're gonna go back home and let's go purchase a trailer uh, i would like to actually buy a trailer so customize that configuration yeah let's do this here we got the spread axle for the drop axle um that's fine we'll do this one Let's check our colors, see anything else. Okay, cool, let's confirm it. Yay. Now, I would also like to purchase a box van, a dry van. Oh, I like the angled lights back here, that's fun. Standard. All right, so there we go, that's gonna cost us $79,000, almost $80,000, we'll confirm that. Okay, so now we have two trailers, um, and I'm thinking about another one. Well, how much money do we have? We have $516,000. Did I not? Oh, I didn't purchase that, did I? Okay, let's just purchase that then. Okay, send it there. Yes, I do. Congratulations. Okay, so that means I didn't actually purchase the flatbed that I configured up. Customize configuration on this one. Okay, it's still there. The configuration is still there. Perfect. Um, exit. There we go. Purchase. Put that at quarter lane as well. Yes. Yay. Okay, now we're down to $386,000. Let us purchase another trailer. I want to be able to do all the jobs uh, that might come our way. It's a logging truck. It's a heavy machinery and high cargo. Do, 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 do. I kind of want to do like a tanker truck and get some of that hazmat stuff. Liquid food goods. Flambo liquids, corrosive, toxic, and otherwise dangerous liquids. Oh, yeah. D-shaped tank. I like it. Customized configuration. All right. Lights. Lots of lights. I like the angled tail lights. No mud flaps. You score on that side as well. We don't need a toolbox on that side. Lights, all the lights. I think that'll do it. Confirm $62,000. Go ahead and purchase that one as well. Yay. There we go. I had to go into the trailer manager and connect it to my truck. There we go. Okay. So now let's go into the job market. There we go. Cargo market is now available to us. And we can see there's nothing available for us anywhere. Like nothing. <laughs> oh, well. It's probably because I don't have the skill points, maybe. I don't know. So let's do this then. We'll go 
back out of there. And we'll do trailer manager. And let's hook up to, yes. All right. So now let's go take a look at the job market for that. There we go. We got lots of jobs and they pay much better. Much, 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 much better. Perfect. Uh, let's see. We got anything on a quarter lane here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got jobs out of here. Coos Bay, Oregon. That's a long haul for only $944, though. So out of here, not the greatest. But there is jobs. So now let's see what we have for work with the other trailer, the dry van. Yeah, we got some good paying jobs out of here. Like Grangeville, Idaho is actually not too far away from us. We could, could deadhead out there and hook up to that one and then go all the way down to Poochie. Let's see what we have in Coeur d'Alene. Oh, yeah, these pay good. Where's that going? Cody, Wyoming. That's not a horrible run. What about Spokane? Spokane got anything? Bozeman, Montana. That's not, oh, that's not Spokane. <laughs> but it's 2,500 bucks. So that's, that's a good run. So now that we have a trailer, we can make a little bit more money. Let me know what you think about the trucks. And please, if you have any mod ideas, you know, hit me up. So thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. Remember to hit that uh, thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Join the conversation over at Discord. It's not highly active yet. I'm trying to build it up, make it more active. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.